So in Substance Painter, uh, we want 2K and import a low poly mesh. And I'm setting it to Unreal Engine 4. Okay. Right, so once that's loaded in, we want to go to Texture Set Settings and Bake Mesh Maps. And in this bit, in, in Common, in High Definition Meshes, we want to load in our Decimated Mesh. And I'm just going to set it to 512, so it'll do a fast test bake. And just going to set the anti aliasing for 2. And I'm going to increase that front distance and increase the rear distance a bit as well. Okay, and I'm going to bake that. Okay, now that's baked. Let's have a closer look. So we have quite a lot of seams. Now what we're really looking for is any points where the information has been cut off. So normally we get that in the high points where the cage, that is the baking cage is, is clipping some of the high points and the same with the low points. So want to find the areas where I've made the biggest cuts and actually it's a bit messy at the moment but I think it's all okay so I'm going to go back to baking and I'm going to increase this to 2k yeah. and I'm going to turn the curvature seams off and see how that bakes also or I forget, I'm going to change the ID just in case you want to call it ID to mesh ID polygroup. Put that random. Okay, I'll bake that. Okay, so seams have almost completely gone. A little bit of seams there. there um, that could be clipping into that a little bit maybe the cage is slightly too big there's no clipping on the high or low points it's actually pretty good I mean as is I think we'd get away with it especially with textures on but I'm just going to um, lower that frontal distance a little bit and I'm also going to change the subsampling to 4x4 four four to get the crispest. Um, we could put that up to 8, but I don't think we need it for this. Uh, it's going to take quite a bit longer to bake this though. So I'll pause it again. Like that. Okay, that's done. Let's have a little look. So, yeah, seems like the errors on this have disappeared now. Most of the edges have gone. Even those quite deep and extreme cuts that I did are, are baked quite nicely. Uh, it's, it's actually turned out a lot better than I thought, considering um, the depth of some of the details we put in. Okay, I mean, you know, considering it's it's quite low poly as well, I mean, you could certainly make it much lower poly. It all depends on what the um, application of this is. Uh, I really am not limited on polys, really. Uh, I could have gone higher poly. <laughs> so the next step is to add some color to this. The layers, the... Um, Texture on this is going to be really simple. Um, it's not really going to have much roughness or any height. So first of all, I'm just going to add a base color. Okay.
flat roughness on this, okay. Right, um, so then I'm going to uh, duplicate that layer and do some cavities. So first of all, I'm just going to change this to a color that I can see very easily. And then we can generate our own cavity map or we can use one of the smart masks. Um, and I think actually rusty, rusty one might work well for this. Um, or actually dust occlusion. Okay, and click on that. And then increase them dirt levels. Take the grunge down a bit. change this back to a darker version of the color below and just knock it back a little bit okay now because this is a overwatchy styly um, stylized type of scene normally this kind of thing would be entirely hand painted uh, or, or mostly hand painted. So take the UVs into Photoshop, maybe once you've done a little bit of texture here. Uh, again, because time is limited, I want to cheat a little bit and just get something pretty close. So what I'm gonna do is add a, duplicate this layer. And, and add a A sheet of paint strokes that I made earlier. You can see which have some colours in and it'll just break up some of the flat tones. So I'll just drag that into Substance Painter and change to Texture and change it to Current Session, part of that, and then just drag that into Base Colour. Oop. Sorry, drag that into base color of the fill. Okay, actually, that looks pretty good at that scale. You can just see it breaks up some of the tones. Also, we can put this into roughness. And then if we change the layer to roughness and then just reduce that a little bit. So in this next step, I want to create some uh, edge highlights. This will help highlight some of the details that we've sculpted in. And because this is a stylized uh, piece, it helps make it look a little bit more prominent and a little bit more eye-catching. And to do this, I will be duplicating the last layer I made and making it a, bit, a little bit lighter, deleting the mask and replacing it with a edges strong from the smart masks. And I'll make two versions of this, so two layers, uh, one that's slightly blurred out and a second one that is much higher contrast and sharper. And this helps pick out those details and give the overall piece a stronger look. So I'm just going to try and get a little bit of um, height information on here, a little bit of um, detail. And I'm going to actually use the detail that comes with the concrete texture. Very concrete, simple. Just drop that underneath everything else. Yeah, so that's got just a nice little bit of height information there. 
which is a little bit too much at the moment so I'm just gonna click on height and just drop this down just so it's slightly more subtle and there is a problem with a seam up here even though my textures are tiling um, I'm gonna go back to fill here and I'm going to change this to triplanar and that way it projects from four different angles and blurs between the two to, uh, between the four projections and I think I might increase the tiling as well and here I'm just changing the contrast of the painterly layer we added by adding a, a, a levels filter above the texture fill and just adjusting that so that the different con the different bits of contrast in that texture that I put in shows through a little bit more and just adds a little bit more variation to the colour. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit of dirt splatter. So just um, put in an empty layer, add a fill, and make it a brown, and then then look through the smart mask to find a nice mask that will break this up and look like a nice dirt pattern. Um, and I do the same for moss as well, but what we don't want is something too granular or too detailed because this is a painterly uh, project. We want it to be as simple as possible. And then I would like to add a tiny bit of moss to this. So I'm just going to add these to a folder. Call that stone. And then new layer. fill and mossy green so to make the moss above the green layer I add another green layer with a noise map in it to add a little bit of variation of the green light and dark and then I also add that noise map to the roughness to add a little bit of variation in the specular highlights okay so we've made like a mossy texture and next we want to mask it with something mossy. To do this we're going to group these layers call that moss and then drop that moss on there you can see there's moss coming down from the top um, go into the mask editor so here I'm just adjusting that mask until the moss is at the level that I desire I want it just to fill the cracks at this point um, and then I'm adjusting the different color layers so that the moss stands out and isn't too bright and blends in well with the color of the rock and the type of moss that I want it to be. And then to finish it off, I add an extra mask, um, a generator this time. And all I want to pick out from the generator is the grunge mask. And this just adds a few extra spots of moss to the overall um, asset pack. Okay. So the moss is a little bit overkill, but um, we can save out two versions of this, one with the moss and one without, and then add both of those textures uh, to Unreal and use vertex painting to paint the moss in where we want it. And so for example, once we've stacked the pillars up, we can paint the moss around the bottom to look like water damage and whatnot has caused the moss to grow. I think the edges of this is a little bit strong. So here I'm just adding some final adjustments. Uh, though I'm happy with the results at the moment, I wanted to add a little bit of dirt. So some dirt patches like you can see on the screen at the moment. And this can be done anyway, uh, rust mask or dirt mask or generate your own, depending on what kind of result you wanna get from this. Then I'm just finally adjusting the, uh, the highlights and the cavity fills. All right then, so once you're happy with the textures, make sure to save your work. And then we can export these textures out to ready to be dropped into Unreal 4.
Okay, so before we go into UE4, we want to prep our models for export. Now you've got two options really. You can export each one of these individually into UE4 and then build the pillars up from these in UE4, group them together and then you can rearrange them as you please. Or you could group them together in here into the different arrangements you want and that way um, you can make multiple ones in here and then export them into UE4 and place them together. It's a little bit more simple and easy to manage. Um, but I'm going to actually import these separately so that I can build them in UE4. So the first thing I need to do is make sure the pivot points are correct. So what I'm doing here is just going through each piece of the pillar and moving the pivot points to the correct place. And the correct place for these would be the bottom and centre of each pillar. That way, uh, when you can, when you place the p each piece of the pillar on top of the next piece, you know that the uh, pivot will click to the grid exactly in the right place, um, so that there's no gaps between each section of pillar. And also making sure that those pivot points are in the centre of each piece means that we can rotate them without them oscillating off centre. And then. I will go through each section of pillar just doing some general house cleaning so renaming all the pillars to make sense that way when they're moved into UE4 um, it's easy to uh, type or change each piece of pillar because they will be named with a naming convention. Okay, so all my pivots are in the correct places on these pillars, and they all stack neatly. Uh, now to export this into UE4, we can either move them all to world zero, which is easy enough if you type in zero, zero, zero at the top, and then export them one by one. That way the pivots will remain in the correct places. Or we can use a little program called PBUDK, and you just select what you want to export, and it's all named correctly add them here and then select these and then export them after defining the folder where you want them to be saved and what that will do is move them all to the center of the world export them and then move them back again okay so in UE4 we want to go into models and a folder called pillar I've made and then import and select those ones that we just exported, pillar, 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 and open. And then we want to generate the collisions, and I've also selected generate light map UVs. So it'll take the UVs that we've already made and just arrange them with sufficient padding. Import all. Okay, so now we need to go for each one of these and hook up the texture. But first we need to make the texture. So uh, oh, the materials. So first of all, we're going to go into textures, new folder, and pillar, and then import into pillar, textures that we made. And then go back to material and create a new material pillar A and we're going to drag the textures into this material but first of all this multiple layers map um, we need to turn off sRGB or else it won't render properly and the roughness will be very shiny and then save that and close it then we can drag all three of these in and this is very simple I'm not going to do any fancy texture work 
just drag the albedo into the base color, the normal into the normal, and then starting at the top with the red channel into ambient occlusion, the green channel into roughness, and the blue channel into metallic. Have a little look at that. Yep, save. Okay, we can close that. And then we can go back to our models folder. Pillar. And we can edit these assets. So I've opened them all at once. So we can go through these, start at the beginning. First of all, probably easy if we just drag these on. So we'll go to materials. We can see pillar A there, so we'll drag a material in. That looks good. And we can change the light map resolution down a little bit because it's really small. Down 32. Just check the UVs as well. Yep. Yep, click save and close that. Same again for this. And just run through each one of these hooking up the textures. Okay, so I'm just gonna drop some of these pillars in here. So I'm gonna start with the base. And then uh, I'll go for a pillar large. And then Swap that for a pillar medium or even a pillar small and then cap. So that would be a pillar A top. Pretty nice. So at this point, we have our pillars made, we have the textures made and the materials set up. So it's just a case of constructing the pillars in your scene and moving them about the, um, the world, putting them in place. And uh, that's all there is to it, really. Uh, the only other thing I did at this point was put these pillars inside Marmoset to render them for a nice portfolio view um, for the cover of this video. But this same technique can be applied to um, most of these stylized items, certainly anything made out of rock or stone. Uh, I did this technique for a modular brick kit, uh, a wood kit, and a, um, a, a tile, a tile floor tile kit. And it's pretty much just the same technique for each. And I even, uh, because it was going to the same scene, this allowed me to share some of the uh, materials that I built inside Substance Painter. I would group those materials up into a folder and then save them within Substance Painter as a smart material. That allowed me then to apply them same textures to multiple different assets that I've made for this scene. So thank you for watching this series. I really hope it's helped you improve your stylized modeling. Um, if you've liked this or if you enjoyed it, please subscribe for more videos. I'll be trying to get some out as soon as possible. Thank you.